Okay, so now we're going to see how we can use Photoshop to do some of the more difficult sort of rendering things uh, that we come across in our fashion sketches. Uh, mainly prints, and I told you to show you how to do little gradients too, so we're going to check that out too. Um, so in one of the sets that I did, I got a little swatch of a nice little paisley. Paisley especially is very complicated to draw, um, so, uh, you know, to sort of save you the hassle, you can, I would color in what you would color in and then leave it blank. Now I don't have this blank, it's fully colored and rendered, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to do it right on top of it anyways and it should just look fine. Um, we can again add a few different elements uh, of lines and shading and if you want to go crazy you can also sort of finish up with the lines and stuff in, in Illustrator as well because it's a little bit easier to do stuff like that in Illustrator. So um, what we're going to do is, um, let's say I want this paisley up here. Now there's a few ways you can do it. So one of the ways that we can do it, now let's just create a new layer and make sure that it's on top of everything. Okay, it's at least on top of the drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, first I'm going to zoom in so I can really see what I'm doing, what's called the sort of, um, I forget what it's called, uh, but it's right in here, the clone stamp tool. And what the clone stamp tool does is you can um, hold down the alt key and it will select from here. And so when you start drawing, it'll draw, it'll basically pick up what's over here and put it over here. And I'm going to want a slightly bigger brush and a slightly harder brush. Yeah, just to show you. Um, and then the more detailed areas, I'll go into a smaller brush. But let's start here. And I can go ahead and why isn't it painting? It should be painting right over. Oh. So I got to I got to select from the layer that where it actually has a thing. Haha, <laughs> that makes sense. And now I can just go ahead and start painting in my print. And again, I'm going to avoid those tight edges for now, and I'm going to just keep going back and forth. Now this of course is going to kind of go over my lines, but that's okay cuz I can put them back in. Now here I'm, I need to go back and sort, uh, uh, sample um, a little bit more up here. And this isn't the best. If you have a really big swatch, it's a little bit better. And so we'll go in and la 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 la. And I'm going to go ahead so you get the idea. Um, so I'm pretty much going to do the same thing, but just kind of continue on, uh, but I'll probably fast forward so I don't bore you guys to death, and then pick back up uh, where we have finished, when we have finished.
Now we have, I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, as you can see, I've used that to create the plaid and it didn't take me that long, even though I did fast forward not to bore you. Um, we do have to go ahead and put some of our lines back in and honestly, I would recommend you do this in Illustrator. So what you would do, let me just do it real fast, is to save as a JPEG. Illustrator. about it um, and what we'll do is go ahead and I mean we can bring it down a little bit if you want Then I can go ahead and with my pen tool, with black line and nail fill, go ahead and put in the lines that I kind of have gone ahead and taken out. And we'll just clean up the edge of it, the rest of it, just how it was. So like so. Outside line again, and most of it, but let's just clean it up. We had it kind of coming around and up, and then I want to be able to shade the inside. So, what I'm going to do so, this inside here, I want to shade to make it look like it's in the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, oh, I should have locked that layer anyways, um, on this layer that's a new layer and now uh, the other one's locked, I'm going to create a shape that is what I want to be the shadow shape. So it's going to come all the way in here, it's going to kind of wiggle around here, it's going to come up here and maybe I'll put a little shadow on the leg as well while I'm at it. I mean, there's a little bit there anyways from my drawing, but we'll just go ahead and add a little bit more. And bring it up here. Oop, can't bring it all the way up there yet. Okay, and now this shape is gonna be our shadow shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it with gray. Okay, and then we're going to go to properties, and then down here in opacity, we're just going to reduce the opacity. And you can see that will give us a nice sort of shadow shape. And I'm going to bring this in here. Oop. And there it is. So I'm going to zoom out and so you can see what that looks like, and you can do all your shading like that as well. Um, so again, it's serving its purpose. It's sort of creating the illusion that um, one part is set back and one part is forward. Okay, cool. So that's the print, and there's actually only one way to do the print. So I want to show you a couple other ways. So let's do the other top here a little bit different. So over here, what I have is I have the actual print. And it's actually pretty cool. I didn't even notice this until it was all kind of big, but it's a nice little paisley, and they sort of hid these little skulls in it. So I don't know, it's kind of neat that way. It sort of has a little secret hidden in the pattern. Um, so what I did here is since the whole thing is the pattern that I want, you can go to patterns 
and um, go to new pattern preset and then there it is and then you can find it now I hid this in my trees for some reason so I'm just gonna remember that um, it's not a tree but it will save whatever you want wherever you want it so what I'm gonna do now where was the one I was working on there we go um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this up here a different way and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually make a selection and then fill it. Um, so uh, I'm going to use my pen tool and the pen tool works just the way it does in Illustrator. So I'm going to just sort of um, go ahead and outline this area that I want to be print. but that's okay. your selection is the way you want it what you're going to do is you're going to go to your paths which is by your layers or you can find it in your windows and this is the path that I just made so I'm going to make it in a, a selection by going up here and doing so long as it's highlighted yeah uh, go to make selection now I might feather it just like a little tiny bit or you don't feather it at all again this is a little bit different so there it is, there's the selection. Now I'm gonna to go to edit, fill. And in my fill options, I have a pattern option. So I'm gonna to go to pattern and then find my pattern and hit okay. And there we have it. Um, a little bit, I don't know what's faster for you. I mean, the obviously the end fill uh, is a little faster. It's also more precise. You can see with the brushes, it, it gets a little muddy um, in areas, but you can rein that in with um, your uh, text or whatever. So again, um, you know, using Photoshop for prints is kind of a godsend uh, because one of the most time-consuming things uh, when it comes to fashion drawing is those prints, those plaids, those tiny little details. Um, you know, I would be here forever in a day if I had to render uh, every little detail on this little paisley. It's very complicated, but it's a beautiful fabric. And, you know, when I was in school, um, you know, we did, I didn't, have, there was, it was much more emphasis on doing things by hand. Um, we had Photoshop. Uh, I wasn't quite as good as it with it. I'm still sort of learning Photoshop, but uh, especially uh, when mixing it with my um, actual designs. But um, it makes our lives easier. And this is, it's a perfect rendering every single time without any talent, which is <laughs> kind of amazing. Um, so again, you know, um, whether you do your, your sketches 100% digitally or whether you are doing them by hand, um, at this point, there really shouldn't be any drawings that are completely just by hand. Um, you just have too many benefits from 
um, you know, just from just little uh, cropping down and, and adjusting your uh, levels and, and saturations and things like that to uh, being able to do prints and different things like that. So um, in addition, I said I would show you how to do a gradient as well if you wanted to go ahead and do a gradient um, like this instead of doing it by hand. Um, uh, there's really wonderful ways to do it. Maybe I should have just not done it, left it blank and done it by hand. Uh, or instead of doing it by hand. Um, so let's go and I'm gonna start back and let's do, should we do this shape? So um, what's gonna kind of go away is the lines. That's something that you're gonna wanna have to go back and um, do in Illustrator. But if you if you are missing your lines, so um, let's, let's take this for instance. So, you know, I had those princess scenes and stuff in here. Now, because it was, um, what is this oh, oh, they're all tied. Uh, okay. Um, I can reduce the opacity a little bit and start to get those lines through. See how those lines are coming through? Now the green is obviously also coming through because everything is see-through, but if I had left page white, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. Just be careful because um, you really want, you know, that's a, it's a much different color. You don't want to dull the colors just to get those princess seams. It's better just to go back and put in some of those seam lines um, in Illustrator. Uh, it's a lot easier um, and ends up looking a lot better. So um, let's, redo the gradient here but again I'm not going to have all these lines that's something I would go back to Illustrator to add back in if I really wanted to have them um, but it's nice to show you how to do it um, anyways uh, and actually you can do the whole thing in Illustrator if you wanted to um, because there's gradient features in there which are actually a little bit easier to use um, so it's really up to you what you want to do um, so let's go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to do this kind of quickly because this is, you know, ombres are a little bit, you know, we don't use them every day, not as much as prints for sure. And I'm going to go ahead and I do the same thing. I'm just going to select that area. So this is going to go pretty much the same way as what I did for the top print fill. La, 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 la. Now that I have the whole thing as a path, I'm going to, again, continue my way along um, and go back to paths, and there it is, and I'm going to make it a selection. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. So now that it's a selection, what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to go back to fill, and we're going to use... Oh. Sorry, I'm going to go to gradients. And I have that gradient I used uh, before, I created before, remember? Um, when we did the swatch. So I'm just going to find my gradients. So I should be able to just apply that. Yep, there it is. So boop, plop, and there we go. Um, now what I'm going to do is it looks, again, I would put the lines over it. Um, it looks a little solid. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the opacity so some of those lines can come through and we can sort of see how it looks. And it doesn't look too bad. Um, it definitely smooths out my uh, existing gradient, makes it a little bit kind of smoother and, and more true to life. And again, by adjusting that opacity, um, 
I get uh, all the lines and little details that I did uh, when I drew it by hand. Um, so there we are, a little bit different um, design there. I think I would definitely change the turquoise of that kind of S shape now, make it maybe a really dark navy blue. Um, but <laughs> again, that's something for another day. So um, if you want to do your prints in uh, Photoshop, that's great. Um, the one thing I will mention is when we have a skirt, um, it's best to go ahead and break up your pattern in the drape. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, let's take, let's assume that this was, I'm going to do this a print, and it has all these different little drapes, right? So let's get rid of that gradient fill for a sec. And, um, and so this is a flat, this is a flat pattern, right? And what, it's fine because there's no drapes or anything in here, but if there were drapes, what we want to do is we want to break up the pattern repeat just like we do with stripes. So um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and you can see sort of how these drapes are coming around. Um, and if I were to do just a flat pattern like this on top of them, um, it's really not going to feel very real. So what am I going to do? So um, maybe I'll use that clone stamp tool because I can source what little area is um, uh, I'm sourcing from. And let me just show you an example. So I'm going to do sort of one um, sort of drape down here. So let's just start with this. Okay, never mind. I got a source from the right layer, or else I'm just getting blanks. Okay, there we go. So this section is fine. It can be flat. It doesn't need to be broken up, let's say. Okay, whoop, little dot there. And again, the lines are going to be re really important. So see how this little detail here? That's the edge of the sort of flare. So what I want to do now is I want to source, so this gets broken up. So um, I'm going to source again, like just below here, and we're going to start there. So I get that shape, but it's broken up. See how I broke it up? I shifted the whole shape up. And that's really what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going to maybe just do just this top part, and I'm going to continue breaking it up and breaking it up. Again, let's break it up here. And again, I'm just resampling and sort of shuffling along, and I'm going to move along with the pattern too. break it up again and we're getting back into here so that let's go over here and let's break it up break it up so we're not getting anything completed And because I'm breaking up this pattern, and you can see, especially once I put the lines on it, you could probably already kind of feel it. Here it looks very flat. It doesn't look like there are any drapes in it, and that's because the pattern is flat. It's not broken up. Here, where it is broken up, you are starting to get that feeling of the drapes and the fullness of the fabric and, you know, the fact that it is, it's not just flat. continue on then we'll do our last little bit right here Oop. let's make sure it's on the so hopefully you can see that and again um, uh, just to reiterate once I put those lines in there you really really feel that drape this is just like um, how we broke up the stripes 
pattern in drapes when we did the uh, section on stripes. So um, again, and once you put those lines in there, because that pattern is broken up like this, you're gonna get that feeling of depth and of texture. Add a little bit of shadow to that and you're good to go. And this applies to if you're doing it by hand as well. You just wanna break up those patterns um, within those drapes. Because the drape, what happens with the drape is you get part that kind of arcs out and then part that, that arcs in. And you don't see the part that arcs in. Uh, but the pattern doesn't stop for that, you know, inner part, it just gets broken up. So you get this sort of very broken up feeling. Here feels very flat, here feels very full. And again, once we put those lines in there, it will um, uh, feel that way even more so. So let me just, let's see if I can um, go ahead and adjust my opacity on this layer just to sort of, you can see a little bit of the lines showing through and um, with them together, really giving that feel of, um, you know, the ruffles, uh, uh, just in comparison to over here where it's very, very flat. So um, that's my little uh, how to do uh, helpful tips on using Photoshop, uh, how to digitize your sketches and all that good stuff. Hopefully, um, you know, if you're afraid to do prints before uh, because, oh, it's too complicated and, oh, it's gonna take too much time. Um, and trust me, it does take an awful lot of time if you do them by hands. I know in school, again, like I said, I avoided prints, especially paisleys like this, um, so much, even though they're so fun and they're so great to use. Um, but now we have, you know, Photoshop and things like that to really not only help our drawings stand out and make them look really good, um, but to help make those really complex print renderings really, really easy and quick. Um, and you can, you know, like I said, I like to switch between Photoshop and Illustrator uh, to really get things the way I want them. Uh, I find it easier to draw and things like that in Illustrator. Um, and then, you know, for the uh, color and you know applying your print patterns and things like that it's a lot easier to do in photoshop but you can just sort of switch um, between them um, i certainly do uh, just like i use lots of different types of media uh, when i draw i like to use lots of different uh, programs when i digitize uh, so again hopefully this is helpful hopefully um, you'll have a little bit easier time uh, going ahead and you know putting um, your sketches together, making them look really nice and professional. Um, because again, like I said, you know, you're not just digitizing your sketches to hand in to me for a one-time thing. You should be digitizing all your sketches and all your work to put in your portfolio. Uh, the day of the physical portfolio is over. We've moved into the modern day. Um, we need to know how to um, put all of our sketches in a digital digital format um, it just is what it is um, and again a lot of times it makes our lives a lot easier um, a digital file can't get dirty it can't get ripped it can't get stained it can't get lost well it can't get lost but not if you have a cloud um, so it's always going to stay beautiful um, just like the day you drew it whereas your actual physical sketch the paper's going to age, it's going to get dirty, it's going to get wrinkled, it could get torn, um, all these different things. So, you know, it just, it's going to make it last longer, look better, um, easier to send out to people, so on and so forth. Um, that, and you got to do it. Um, all right, so I'm going to sign off, and we're going to have a couple other lessons this week about uh, a little bit looking at...